So we're responsible for all kids in the district. All kids in the district. So with that being said, we have to look at what facilities we need to upgrade. We have two small high schools in the district. Two very small high schools and we already have a teacher shortage. So we have teachers right now traveling from school to school to make sure that the kids are able to get quality instruction from a qualified teacher. Right now, I believe we have about three teachers going back and forth to different schools. One day they're here, then they're zooming in with the McEvans High School students, and then the next day they go to McEvans, then they're zooming in with the kids from this school. Uh, 2023 capital improvement projects here at West Baltimore High School, we're gonna be doing some renovations at the football field. Um, the football field is in pretty good condition now, but we have that building that's on the side. We're gonna turn that into restrooms and also concession stand to be there. So we're gonna upgrade that building so that uh, the public will have access to better uh, facilities. Students will also get, get, get a jumbotron, which is a video screen that's gonna be at both school sites at the football field. Um, the football field is going to get some, the football field house will get some upgrades and some new equipment. Um, we will also do a, here at West Baltimore High School parking lot, road, and sidewalk repairs. Um, if you notice, if you go behind West Baltimore High School, you'll see that the road is kind of messed up pretty bad. And also our parking lot, as far as leaving the entrance, and the sidewalks is also very dangerous. So we want to make sure that the repairs are done. And also, uh, under ESSER, we're gonna expand the, uh, we're looking to expand the office here at West Baltimore High School. You notice if you come into the office, it's pretty tight there. So we're looking at uh, getting approved the expansion of the office so we can actually take that office to the outside of the building so that we'll have better space there. Um, the restrooms are getting upgraded. And of course, roof repairs as well as HVAC. At West Baldo Elementary School, we're going to do parking lot, road, and sidewalk repairs. Uh, we're also going to do a multi-purpose building. Right now, West Baldo Elementary School students have to go outside in order to uh, have PE. So we want to give them their own space so that they won't have to always be outside. So the multi-purpose building will be built uh, for West Baldo Elementary School extracurricular activities. Also at West Baldwin Elementary School, we're going to do classroom, hallways, restroom, and office renovations. Uh, West Baldwin Elementary School is not in the best condition. Um, our restrooms are in their need of repairs. If you've ever walked down the third or fourth grade hall, you know, we need that carpet removed. Walls need to be painted. So we just got to definitely do some upgrades at West Baldwin Elementary School. At the Joe Barnes, at the last board meeting, the uh, board approved HVAC upgrades under the ESSA project, so that's not going to cost the district any, fun, any funds. So let me just make clear, there is no school closing in the West Baltimore Consolidated School District. In order for that to happen, the board has to take action to make that happen. And so far, last, that has not happened. Um, last semester is when these projects were approved. So there has not been, of course, there were talks about possibly having one high school when we first came in, you know, when we were looking at the facilities, but that's our job is to look at the facilities so we can see how to best utilize all of our uh, properties. So we did have talks about it, but of course, after assessing all of our buildings and what we needed to do, we decided it would be in the best interest of the district um, to kind of keep things separate but equal at the same time, but we also have to make sure we promote equity to make sure that everybody's getting the same resources. And that's one of the things that I hear at the State Department a lot when I have to go to my meetings. They state, they share several times that those districts with two small high schools, if you're offering advanced placement classes at one school, you have to also offer it at the other school. So that's been our goal is to make sure that if we're doing something on this side of the district, we're also doing it on the other side of the district because a complaint can be filed and we could be in a lot of trouble. And just imagine if one side of the district does not have good facilities and we have a more of a diverse group of students, student population, community population, we'll be in some civil rights violations. Um, so we're trying to make sure that all students have access to quality facilities. Um, all of our schools are improving academically, um, and we want to just make sure we keep that momentum going.
We keep that momentum going so that we can still see success in this district. That's our ultimate goal. We have to make sure we put the interests of students first. Students have to come first. You know, sometimes I know adults have opinions about certain things, but at the end of the day, our school board, the superintendent, the principals have to make decisions that's in the best interest of the district. And we feel that it is in the best interest if that we upgrade our current facilities so that all students can have access to better, uh, better facilities. So our projects are gonna cost us about $6.5 million. Um, last year, we had about a $2 million surplus in our budget. Um, we're working for, we're starting the process for the budget for next year. So we're pretty confident that we have the funds to be able to pay uh, the loan for that. Uh, at the last board meeting, the board approved the first phase of the project, which is $738,000. That's gonna be strictly for the Rosedale project. That's for the, the classroom building renovations, the sidewalk repairs, as well as the doors and windows. So the board has already approved that. We should get funding coming in in May. In May, we should start getting those funds and then we'll be able to go ahead and get started with those particular projects. And I think that's all that I have for facilities. Now I'm gonna go into these questions. All right, so uh, MVE has a list of highly qualified instructional material that's already been vetted. We're utilizing Sabbath, Sabbath realized for our ELA and math curriculum. It's already been highly, uh, it's already been vetted by the State Department. And with that, with the State Department, we feel confident what we're using is working. So that, you know how we get to the end of the chapter, and we have those questions that need to be answered. Students can do that online, and that'll give them some quick, the teachers quick response without them even uh, grading the assignments. So that has been very, very helpful for us to accelerate student learning. So uh, I believe that the process that the State Department has gone through has been vetted, and it is something that is making our curriculum very much prepared. And we're also seeing it in the progress of our testing. As I stated with you, our proficiency is increasing and our growth rate is increasing, and we want to make sure we continue on that uh, path. And again, there's no schools closing doing due to poor performance. And so why did you initially say that all of these project facility upgrades would be paid through ESSER funds, not through the debt? Um, on the document that you have in parentheses where you see E-S-S-E-R, that's ESSER, those are the projects that's being paid through um, our federal funds and all other projects will be paid through the COPS fund that we're receiving. That is the $6.5 million loan so that we can do the facility upgrades. So we will have to pay, of course, that money back. The one was by uh, the federal. Right, ESSER does not have to be paid back, but the other projects will have to be paid back. Like and that's through who? That's through the district. The okay. district will have to pay that back. Yes, sir. Um, how, how does the school board plan to circumvent, shut down the negative comments about the schools in the district? Of course, everyone has a right, constitutional right for expression. So, of course, we can shut people down for making comments and things like that about the things that are spreading misinformation. What we want to do is encourage our parents to have that conversation with uh, their school principals, with the superintendent, so that you can get the right information. A lot of times if you hear something on the, from the street committee, you didn't hear it from the superintendent or from the principal, more than likely it's just the street talk. Because we're going to put the information out there, that information is going to be shared uh, with the public, and we want you to have that information. So if it's something that somebody is telling you that the school is closing, you, know, you ask yourself, should I believe that, number one? Did you get that information from somebody at the school? No, you didn't. So of course, we know people are out there doing that. Um, what their agenda is, hey, I don't know if they want the district to fail. Some say they want the state to take over. Um, the State Department doesn't have a say of whether or not the district is gonna be consolidated or not. Again, that is an act of our legislator, legislat legislative uh, branch of government and it's signed by the governor. So in order for the district to, to be deconsolidated, that would has to be an act by the legislature. And I don't think that the legislature is gonna do that. But we'll continue to put the positive message out there. We'll continue to put the positive message about the things that are happening in our schools because honestly, our teachers are working really, really hard. 
These teachers and students and principals are working hard. And of course, they don't need those, they don't need distractions to stay focused. Because guess what? They want to go to an NBA game if they improve their accountability rate. And we want these kids to have the best experience. The best experience. I don't think anybody in this district come to work ready to be detrimental or do something hateful for, to a kid. I don't think that this district has hired anyone to, and someone that comes in to say, hey, I'm going to make this kid life miserable. If they are out there, then just let the principal know so that they can investigate because employees have a right to due process as well. But our teachers, education, public education is the center stone of America. We should be supporting our local schools because in turn, they're the ones taking care of these babies. So we've already had, what, two years of learning loss due to the pandemic. Our third graders right now, they're struggling to pass the third grade assessment because their education was interrupted their kindergarten year. They didn't even receive day-to-day -day instruction in the first grade. In the first grade, they pretty much skipped the first grade. And that was a critical year. This year, now it's a struggle. It is a struggle, you all. Right now, we have about 55% of those students who are projected to pass. 55%. Last year, I think the first admission test, we had about 43% of the students that passed last year. So once they take the test on April the 19th, this week, we at West Baldwin Elementary School, I think on yesterday, out of 39 third graders, we only had 10 third graders present. 10. And we have consultants in the building that we're paying money to that are not able to tutor those kids to get them ready. So at the end of the day, if those students are retained, they will be retained because they did not pass the third grade gate assessment. So it is very, very imperative, especially for our third graders, fourth and up, that they meet their academic growth goals because just because we're celebrating the elementary school and the high school projected to be a C, we have three, three weeks, three to four weeks before we actually take the test. And what happens on that test, it was going to determine the accountability grade. So again, we want to make sure that students are ready. We've gotten, we've kept them motivated all year. And we do not want to see West Baldwin High School or West Baldwin Elementary School projected to be an F or receiving an F. And I'll know by June, but I won't be able to tell you until probably August. So we have work to do. Let's work together. When you're speaking to the superintendent or the principal, we have to do that in a professional way. No matter what community that you live in. You can't walk up to a principal or a superintendent and speak negative about kids, negative about the communities that we all serve. We're all one district, one district. And I don't play politics. I don't play top politics with nobody when it comes to these kids. So we're gonna put the interests of kids first. I'm not gonna be that blackmail about certain things, whether or not I, I to plan a meeting with you or you gonna to go to the other side, I don't do that. Because my number one priority is to make sure that these teachers and students have the tools needed to be successful. And this year, these teachers have grown so much and we're building capacity with what they can do. Where next year, we don't have to spend all this money on consultants. We're gonna invest in the people that we already have. So I can't do anything about what happened in the past, but I can have an impact about what's gonna happen in the future. You know, I'm concerned because of the curriculum. I understand savvy, but when, it, when you look on a broader base of what these kids have to compete with, and you, you talk to students who have gone on to college, they say they feel inferior because they just can't compete and they have to start remedial when they go to college. And there's like, we don't have calculus. We don't have a lot of classes that other schools have. So our kids are not able to start on an equal playing field. Thank you so much for that question. Mm -hmm. um, as I stated earlier, we're utilizing Savage Realize. 
in the State Department, when the State Department conducted their review of highly quality instructional materials, they used educators from all across the state. And they reviewed the curriculum um, that was being offered through several companies. The curriculum that, I can't attest to what curriculum was being used the last 10 years, but the State Department has already put a process in place where they provide us with the list of these are the highly quality instructional materials. So as a district, we're following the guidance of our State Department who's already vetted these programs. Of course, this is not something that's gonna happen overnight as far as improving the ACT scores and things like that. That's gonna have to be worked over time. It's gonna have to be worked over time. It's the same thing like third grade right now. We have students about a little, a little under half of our students are not able to pass the third grade gate assessment. So we're having to try to find creative ways to provide remediation where they can go back and teach those skills that they may have missed out on. Um, already the program that we use will put students on their pathway. So if we have a third grader and they take the assessment in August, that student may be placed on the kindergarten level, first grade level. They take it again in December, that uh, pathway get adjusted and it puts them back on where they need to be. So, we're hoping that that can produce results that we need, but we won't know until we actually get the state test results. But right now, what we're using is showing that we are projecting to be a C. What about seventh grade? Same thing. Seventh, eighth grade, they're all the same thing. We're utilizing Sabbath for all grade levels. For some odd reason, it's just in my heart. No child should have to wait until you get to junior high to have babies to learn how to play football, to learn how to play basketball. The training should start there, not here. They're not, and I think it would tone down a lot of that fighting and trying to uh, video people and all this junk. I think it would tone down a lot. My other one is cursing. We need to think about that. Any form that you fill out, you can print all the way to the bottom, but when it get to the bottom, it says signature. It does not say print. We need to somehow fit in our curriculum a way for these children to learn. Now, um, I appreciate the question about athletics at the uh, lower level. Um, I do believe that we should be teaching the whole child, not just being ready academically, but also physically. Um, last month, the board approved the intramural sports this year. Um, those sports that you were mentioning need to start in elementary. So we're starting, uh, the first game is set this Saturday uh, for the intramural sports for basketball. So we're late getting this started. So we're gonna do basketball in grades second through sixth grade. So it's gonna be free to our students. And we've also, uh, we should have those uniforms in on tomorrow. And the game admission is gonna be free. So this is something that the kids can do that's gonna be fun, second grade, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and that's gonna help us with that particular area. Now we do utilize school standards, so if your number is updated in the system, that they actually text you that information, email it to you, so we do have ways. Just speak to your school principal, and then they'll make sure that you get the information, even if they have to email it to you, we can make sure we get uh -huh, that information to you. Okay? Email for young folk like you. Oh, okay. Email if you want a hard copy, whatever, just make sure you just reach out to your school principal because of course it'll come from the principal, not my office, but they'll be glad to give it to you, find a way to get it to you, even if they have to make a personal phone call to you just to let you know, hey, I'm sending this by your son, expect this. That's what you're going to have to do okay. Why is it that you don't start the first grade tutoring? You talk about the intramural tutoring. Tutoring. Well, this year this tutoring is going to start in the third grade. So we're hoping that we can get the best bang for our bucks because during the instructional day we have time built in for interventions and remediation. So possibly going in, when we go possibly going into ne next year, we'll definitely look at expanding it into grades K through two. But right now it's only for grades third through eighth grade for this year. Yes, ma'am. But this summer, it will be open with a K-2 as well, this summer. Okay? Right here. I wanted to know, uh, do the eighth grade have the ELA? I was informed by my child that she doesn't have an ELA teacher. We do have an ELA teacher here at West Bolivar High School. She is out on medical leave. Are they going virtual? 
So Miss Ben is the academic coach for uh, for ELA. So she's been working with those students. Miss Matt Knight, our social studies teacher, she's been delivering some uh, ELA lessons. Miss Matt Knight back there, raise your hand. I observe she's been doing the ELA. So she's actually been teaching the ELS, ELA lessons to the students. So in situations like that, when we have someone that has to be out, there's nothing that we can do. We can't stop somebody from being out, but if they are out, then we have to accommodate those employees until they return. Um, of course, the same thing, like, you know, if somebody have a baby, they're gonna be out a certain amount of time. We'll have to utilize maybe an online program, an academic coach, to make sure that they're getting the things that they need. I do want to say that West Baldwin High School, they've been doing a really good job with ELA. I think our growth rate, about 88% of those kids have been meeting their growth goal. So even without a teacher since February, they're still meeting their academic growth goals. And they've done it first nine weeks, second nine weeks, and third nine weeks. So I'm not alarmed as far as, that's probably one of the reasons why West Bolivar has made the improvements that they've made, uh, mainly because of ELA. And we've been struggling, math has been up and down, but ELA has been consistent with meeting their academic growth goals. So I definitely appreciate the work that Ms. Matt Knight and Ms. Wilson have been doing this year, as well as Ms. Bann. Um, without diving into whatever concerns that you have, as the superintendent, I don't run the day to day operations of our students. That's why it's imperative that if a parent has a concern that we take the necessary steps to address your concerns at the school level. Um, as you know, um, you met with the team, of students, the team of teachers and staff members that interact with your child. So those are the people that can assist you. I actually contacted the principal at the high school, told her to come home, and also asked those teachers to come home so that they can answer any questions that you may have. So there are certain things that I can't answer for you. I have to get the people that actually support your child every day. Now, if they can't answer your question and they're not helping you to resolve your issue, of course, follow back up and say that the principal cannot help me, the teacher cannot help me. And that way, I will help mediate or facilitate whatever it is that your child is not getting. Um, of course, if there is something that, and to my understanding, they resolve the issue. When no schools are closing, qualified teachers for the upcoming school year. Uh, we've been very, very aggressive with our recruitment effort, efforts here in the district. Um, we did our letters of intent back in December. We knew who was coming. We knew what teachers, classified staff, wanted to come back for the upcoming school year. So we've already issued contracts in February. So we're on the district in the Delta that has done that. And so far, 91% of our teachers have returned their contracts. 91% of those teachers have returned their contracts. And uh, I believe in February, we may have hired, since February, we may have hired about seven new teachers for the upcoming school year. So we're filling those positions um, as quickly as possible. There are a lot of people who we've got, we received interest from. Um, we're working with MDE, Delta State, to give people an opportunity to be, to be certified. So if you or you know someone who's passed practice one or have a 21 on the ACT and have a degree, you can actually come to us and we can get you into the Mississippi Teacher Residency Program to get you certified and your tuition is gonna be paid for. So we have two teachers that we're sending through the program this year. And I believe we have a teacher assistant that's gonna become a teacher next year because she's going through the program. So again, if you know anybody out there that's certified, have a 21 on the ACT, or have passed practice one, they can receive a K-6 license to teach and receive a regular contract if they enroll in that program at Delta State and they will receive a free tuition. The tuition will be paid for by the state as part of that program. And Ms. Brown, where's Ms. Brown? Ms. Brown is the person that's working with MDE to coordinate that, so she'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. It's needs on. Once we find out what the students need, they work on those in place. So now we have everything is designed for each individual student's need. So it's very important that the students are at school because we have each of them on their own individual track and we're working with them on what they need. Um, they have to be here for testing because like you said, um, we had ACT today. Students who did not take the ACT today on paper either take it online or they have to catch it in April. And students don't tend to do their best when they do makeup assessments. Um, 
they're kind of in a room somewhere, not with their peers. So it's kind of different giving them makeup assistance. But it's really, really good when they test with everybody else. You know, we try to keep them motivated. We do things to help them be motivated and feel good about testing. And so it's really, really important that we have them here so we can all make sure that they're working on that track. We can make sure that we're providing them with the resources that they need based on the data that we have from their assistance. Um, and that's all.